二十年前は誰かいて十年前いて今は誰って言ったら今は誰だろうね今とにかく一人二人一人だと多分たまにつかな。In our field, many people died prematurely, and there's this big gap between the young and the masters, and the person who has filled that gap. Is Juan Tamariz, who is the most revered magician in the world at this moment. In the shuffle, the, the shuffle deck. <laughs> It happens anywhere between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. after late night dinner and lots of booze. And then he pull, takes his mat out and his card. This is ah. Maybe, perhaps, something crazy. Shuffle, and and then it goes into this, you know, half an hour, an hour of magic, and it blows your mind. And I, I think every person who got to be there, at least once in his lifetime, is lucky. When you really start to get to know Juan on a personal level, there was a kind of a breakthrough to where. I started to get the the real knowledge from the man. You want to talk about history? He knows so much about history. If you want to have a, a theoretical discussion about what the concept of magic is, of course, he's going to have many, many very interesting opinions. And then, when you see him perform, you understand how everything comes to life. Juan is at once the most knowledgeable and the most giving of all card magicians. To be serious in card magic today, in 2013. You have to go to Madrid, and you have to study with Juan Tamariz. For me, I think there are seven veils of mystery. The mystery of the love, because if you don't love your art, you you cannot express yourself. You cannot. Express something with you, without love. It's very, very important to love the passion of the art. The audience, how they know that this man or this woman love magic really. They know, but how they know is a mystery for me. The second one for me is the mystery of the knowledge. If you know more about this tree, about the the author, about him, about the history of the tree, and the more you know. More you, magic is more deep for the people, and the people feel this. How they feel and how I don't know. It's another mystery. The second and third one for me, the mystery of the work. More work you put in an effect, in a trick, in an illusion, in a dream, more strong and more reaction and more deep reaction and more remain in the. Feeling and the emotion of the spectator. How they know that you put more effort, more work? They don't know, but they feel, and this is a mystery. Another one is the the mystery of the energy. Sometimes we perform. I perform in other magician with only this in a theater of 1,500 people, and the last one must feel. <laughs> The energy you have, not only physical but also spiritual, spiritual inside you know. And well, the five mystery for me is the mystery of the true. Of course, the art in general is not true; it's a fiction, you know? not the real life. And magic, especially, you know? especially, you are lying, lying all the time, saying. Uh, do this. I don't know this. I have not here nothing, but you have hidden something, something or something. But the more true is the thing that you do. More true, people feel this, and I don't know how they feel, but they feel, and this is the fine mystery. This mystery is the interior world. More rich is the jewelry interior world. More people like your magic. More they feel your magic. Interior world, there is no interesting.、Uh, you can be a good communicator, a good showman, but not a good artist. There is no so. There's it's not the same.、And、the seventh mystery for me is the mystery of love. But 
I told the first is love, and the last one is love. I think it's important the love to the audience, to the other people, because it's not only a question to I do this and you applaud me. It's not the most important. The most important is the love to the other, no? And the love to the audience is all seven mysteries that I don't know. I don't know how they know, but they know. Sure, sure. They are the, for me, seven veils that cover seven mysteries in magic, and for me they are very important. What's funny is, once you kind of get a grasp of his theory, anytime I have a show that doesn't go over very well, it's not very good, I can go back through it and I can find that one of the veils was missing tonight. I did not have an, enough energy with me. It was kind of a low energy performance. It is absolutely fascinating that an audience can pick up on things that we're really not aware of as performers. So they can smell I mean, what, what, what lecturers call authenticity when somebody really knows their topic inside out, upside down, you can just tell it. And, and, and someone else, an actor, could say exactly the same words, but you just know they don't really know it, and you can't quite put your finger on what it is. It really connected with me because there is something deeper where you do need to have a love for what you're doing, love for the audience, and people can feel it. Howard Thurston would go out and before every single performance, he would go behind the curtain and look out into the audience and clasp his hands together and say in a whisper, I love you, I love you, I love you. I found something very special about that. For me, it doesn't come alive until somebody is there to experience it because I think underneath all of it, underneath everything about magic, the only thing that matters is the emotion that it creates. That's what makes it matter. That's what makes it important, and that's what makes it unique in all forms of art. The magic happens in the minds of the audience, and what a magician is really doing is fully controlling what the audience perceives and how they think about what they are perceiving. And all of these things that magicians do, like letting you examine the props, like rolling back their sleeves, like showing you that their hands are empty. This is all part of that process of elimination to take away one by one all of the things that you think are maybe how the trick works. And when there's nothing left, when you've eliminated every possible method and you still see something happen that's impossible, you feel magic. When you pick up that cup and there's a ball under there, it's a freaking ball under a cup. It's not, there's nothing special about that. The secret of magic is not how do I get the ball under the cup. The secret to magic is how do I make this room full of people care that there's a ball under the cup and react en masse as this is the most important thing they've ever seen. You can study a very, a very complex thing, the technical point of view, the psychological, the artistic, the illusion, the how to communicate, the how to put to the other, the, a lot of interesting things, so many, many, many things, so different many things, because you have the passion. If not, it's not possible to be an artist because magician, because you don't, you don't give nothing. No? All of us who are struggling to try and create good magic are struggling with these same unknowables. Uh, we can all try our best to codify them and identify them and analyze them. I think there are limits. I think sometimes after all of the discussion and all of the, the, the careful dissection, you just have to go out and do it. <laughs>